So now that we could witness the incredible success of the latest SpaceX Starship flight test, where SpaceX achieved the impossible, namely catching a gigantic rocket in mid-air, calls are again getting louder to cancel NASA's space launch system. Just a few days after SpaceX's huge success with the fifth flight test of Starship, Michael Bloomberg published an article on Bloomberg calling for the cancellation of NASA's space launch system. Yes, Michael Bloomberg himself. And he's not alone. We can find more and more articles in which people are getting increasingly vocal about the SLS rocket, demanding for the next president to cancel the thing entirely. Well, what's behind all this? And are those people right? Should NASA's space launch system, which some also call jokingly the Senate launch system, be cancelled? Could we do entirely without the SLS? Well, 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 it seems that after some more years of the SLS not getting anywhere, Wow, it was really difficult to foresee this. The voices are indeed getting louder and louder to finally get rid of this relic of the past. We remember that this thing here has been in development since officially 2011, but in reality even longer. In reality namely, what many people forget is that the SLS is a continuation of the Ares line of rockets from the previous Constellation program, which had been cancelled in 2010 by the Obama administration. So if you wanted, you could trace the SLS development timeline back to 2004, when the Constellation program was announced. Actually, this isn't entirely correct either, because the solid rocket side boosters of the SLS are basically modified, elongated versions of the solid rocket boosters from the Space Shuttle, which, as we know, dates back a long time to the late 70s and early 80s. Thus, it's probably not even possible to estimate the entire program cost of the SLS, and so most people, if they sum up the costs, just add up the costs dating back to 2011, when development officially started under the current form of the SLS, which would be around $26 billion since 2011. However, adding up previous costs from the Constellation program, I wouldn't be surprised if that number was well over $30 billion. And the rocket has until now flown just once. I repeat, once. A rocket that has been under development for almost 20 years, has cost in reality more than $30 billion, has until now flown just once. Wow! So why are the calls to cancel the SLS now suddenly getting louder? Why not three or four or five years ago? Well, the answer is pretty clear. SpaceX. We see how SpaceX achieves one huge success after another with the Starship at the fraction of the cost of the SLS. It becomes more and more clear now, even to the most diehard skeptics of Starship, that this thing will indeed work and that the whole concept of Starship and Super Heavy does work, even including the outlandish seeming idea to catch the Super Heavy booster itself. It becomes now pretty evident, except probably to some hardcore degens, that SpaceX has really achieved now in five years, with probably a fraction of the sum that has been burned with SLS, already now more than the SLS ever will. Namely, a fully reusable rocket system with a higher payload capability than the SLS. Because let's not forget, friends, that the SLS is not reusable. It's, it's a throwaway rocket. This thing is a relic. A relic from decades ago, when the idea of reusable heavy lift rockets seemed preposterous to anyone at NASA. A relic from the old days of fully non-reusable throwaway rockets. But SpaceX has shown impressively that this era has come to an end and that the USA will now have a rocket which will be far more capable and far cheaper to operate than the SLS. 
Let us also not forget that one single SLS launch will cost $2.5 billion dollars as it currently stands. And in its current configuration, the SLS is not even strong enough to launch a complete human moon landing mission. Because in its current block one configuration, the SLS has namely only 70 metric tons of payload capacity to low Earth orbit, which is not much more than the Falcon Heavy with its 64 metric tons. And the latter has flown many times and is in large parts reusable. So for complete moon missions like in the days of Apollo, the more expensive and taller and more powerful SLS Block 1B would be needed, which then would have 105 metric tons of payload capacity to low Earth orbit, which is about as much as the Saturn V had already more than 50 years ago. However, the Starship packs at least 150 metric tons to low Earth orbit, as it currently stands, in reusable mode. And with the next-gen Raptor engines, this number will increase even more, possibly up to 200 metric tons in reusable mode and even 250 or even 300 in expandable mode. And as it looks right now, Starship will probably be able to routinely fly Starlink satellites to low Earth orbit, very likely already by late 2025. And it can be fully reused. So the only recurring costs with Starship will be some refurbishings from time to time and the propellant costs themselves, which are estimated to be around $1 million per launch. So we have a rocket system with more payload capacity than the SLS and it will be a staggering 2,500 times cheaper per launch as the SLS. And it can start very soon after it landed, whereas the SLS can launch only once every year or so because of its hilariously high costs. In fact, the launch cadence of the SLS is so hilariously low exactly because of its exorbitant cost. Namely, currently in the current Artemis timeline, it is envisioned to launch only once every two years. Once every two years. I don't even know what to say. Just compare that to the Apollo era, where from 1969 to 1972, so in a time span of three years, six missions landed on the moon. With Apollo 13, it would have actually been seven missions in three years. So that's on average more than two missions per year. However, with SLS and the Artemis program, it would be only once every two years. So at least four times less frequently as in the Apollo days. So taking all this into account, we now understand why calls to cancel the SLS are getting louder and louder. The only reason why the SLS still exists is because it is a giant jobs creation program. And we are talking inefficient government jobs here. The government is very rarely about efficiency. It's about getting elected and staying in power. And how do you do that? Correct. You promise people jobs and then they vote for you. That is why this Frankenstein's monster of a rocket has been kept alive for so long. However, it will be interesting to see if it will survive the next administration. The Artemis moon missions, as they are currently planned, make no sense whatsoever. Only one mission every two years and then the SLS would launch an Orion capsule, which would rendezvous with a much larger SpaceX Luna Starship in moon orbit and then land on the moon. However, why do you even need the SLS in that hilariously bizarre mission architecture in the first place, when you could easily do the entire mission using only SpaceX's Starship? You would launch the astronauts to the moon directly with Starships, and you could even send tanker Starships to the moon in order to refuel the SpaceX human landing system, thus you could quite easily actually return it to Earth. Because don't forget that the Starship fuel is made up to 78% mass-wise of oxygen and only 22% methane. So the oxygen you need for refueling the Starship locally on the moon, 
you can create super easily directly there from water ice, which can be found in the craters near the lunar south pole. So you would only need to send the methane to the moon in order to refuel the human landing system for its return to Earth. Then you could rendezvous in Earth orbit with a regular starship and return to Earth in it, while the human landing system stays in orbit, waiting for the next mission. And in addition, you could of course also send some lunar starships to the moon prior to landing astronauts there. And then you would have backup bases where the interior of one single starship is larger than anything that NASA has planned in the current Artemis missions. One starship would already be a moon base in itself, packing more than 10 times the interior volume of the current planned pathetically small Artemis base camp which NASA currently envisions to be the moon base of NASA on the moon after 2030. Hilariously small compared to just a single starship. You could do moon landing missions entirely using starships alone at a fraction of the cost of the SLS. Indeed, a starship-based moon mission would probably be at least 10 if not a hundred times cheaper than a similar mission architecture including the SLS. So therefore, you know, taking all this into account, are calls to cancel the SLS justified? Absolutely yes. However, will it be cancelled? Well, that's an entirely different thing. Because we know that the government can keep things alive much longer than we would like to. But the sooner this relic of the past, this Frankenstein's monster, is getting cancelled, the better for the future of US human spaceflight. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe, because we will make many more videos about human spaceflight and about the technological development of humanity. And please consider supporting us on Patreon or via a YouTube membership, because that would allow us to make more and even higher quality videos. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day wherever you are and see you next time.